mic isn't even turned on yet, baby. I'm fired. You're okay, but everything else is. You're good. You got me. Okay, can you hold on? Because I got to let you go for a second. You got to hold on. Don't fall off. <laughs> Don't fall off. Can you say hi? Oh, Lord, I got mustard on my shirt. I'm a hot mess today, y'all. I'm just letting y'all know. This is a hot mess express for real, for real tonight. Okay. How am I sounding, babe? Well, let's see. Yeah, we got to push this button so I can see comments. I'm not hearing you very well. You're not hearing me? But I, I, I am only hearing in one ear. Oh, that's right. We'll ask our peeps. Hey, Amanda. I think you maybe. Oh, there you go. You didn't have your mic turned on. Oh. Oh, no, I didn't have it turned so, on earlier. So you sound good. Okay. All right. So you are good. All right there. Hi, Damar. Hi, Damar. Yeah, there you go. You sound good. I sound good for the few moments I'm going to be on. I know. Sorry, Ken. Dave is leaving us. He's on grandpa duty tonight. It's warm in here, isn't it? Or is it just me? Are you going to help me? Let's not get All popsicle right. stick to everyone. Oh, Lord. I knew that was going to happen. Oh. Is that funny? Thank you. So why don't we start with who is this uh, growth on your... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on your left side. This is the grandbaby. Not anymore. I mean, he's always he's always going to be my baby. <laughs> he's the grand big boy because he's got a little sister coming. Oh, I know, huh? You're going to have to be a big boy now. He's still always going to be my baby. I'll just have two babies now. What? Uh, what's your sister's name? He's not listening, Dad. Yeah, he doesn't care. He's playing a song in his head right now. I can hear it. So when it, when does she do? June? The end of June. End of June. So we'll probably take a break sometime in June. Yes. Just letting you all know. Because grandmas with newborns. Yes. They are vital. We like to think we are anyways. I I I don't know of any young mother that does they don't want their mom there for their first until they're there for about two days, and then they realize, I really need my mommy. Well, I'm going to be good. I'm not going to go in there and tell them what they should do. I'm just going to come and be support. That's my no, job. And, and she has her mom, too, yes. which is a huge help. Yes. She's not on her own. All right, should we say hello? Yeah, let's say hello. Okay, we got, uh, now I'm only on Facebook at the moment. Okay. Angie Champagne, uh, Melinda Thorne from Missouri, Sheila Mortensen Teigen, Says, there's that little cutie again. Yes. Susan Melton says, he's so cute. Would you like him? Beverly Burr. <laughs> no. Because he was throwing a fit about 20 minutes ago. Oh, yeah. They're always, especially when they're asleep, they're really cute. I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Beverly Burr from te Texas. Sheila Mortensen Teigen says, oh, said, said it twice. It was, so, it was a phrase so nice, she said it twice. Um, Christy Wittenberg, Celestine Todd from Texas. Jill Gomez Haley, I apologize if I'm yelling, guys. I cannot hear out of my left ear. So I'm struggling right now. Jim Visithin says, good evening, everyone from New York. Good evening. Um, Flea says, Ken's going to hang out with us even without Dave. <laughs> Michelle Larry Moore, your grandson is so cute. Chris yes. Schmidt says, hello, happy Sunday, Royce, David, Damar, oh. and everybody, you got a shout out. Uh, Yolanda Jones, Pat Wachter, Wachter, I'm going to assume it's Wachter, from Alabama. Uh, Aracelis Escobar says, hola, hola, oh que goodness, bello. Um, Karen <laughs> Moyer says, Ooh, your little well. man is precious. He is precious. Wendy Kramer says, hello, everyone. And Melinda Thorne says, they have Can number two. Grandpa? Ooh, Melinda Thorne says she has number two great granddaughter coffee? coming at the end of the month. Congratulations. Holy moly, greats. I know. Oh, I'm not ready for greats. Catherine Schmidt. That's on Facebook. Let me see if I can get to YouTube's. Hi. Are the you YouTube's? 
What are you going to say? Well, you didn't miss know. anything, girl. We didn't even get started yet, Yolanda. Okay, you want to say something? Yeah. What are you saying? I have way yeah. too much planned. No, you got to say something. I'm you totally say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, tomorrow. Oh, you just said hello to Damar. Because he sees himself yes, in the Yes, he sees Damar. He doesn't see the other people. He you say hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. He probably thinks we're crazy. Like, who are y'all yeah. talking to? Uh, <laughs> over on uh, YouTube, we have Made on Maple Lane, Jonelle Jones. So excited I caught a live. Uh, and she says, but I can't hear great. I can't hear all of you, Jonelle. Tell me if you can. Oh, can she said hear? she can. She's, oh, yeah, she, she came back and said she can. Yeah, at first, my mic wasn't on. Yeah. I was still. Vicki Moore says that. hello. And just Yolanda C. says, what did I miss? Nothing, Yolanda. You didn't miss anything yet. It is 5.01. We are just starting yes. now. We are just starting. And I have way too much planned, but my mind would not stop. So. And Flea says she is on YouTube as well. Oh, okay. All right, with that... I'm going to abandon you. Are you abandoning me? I am. I'm going to take a man in sight because he wants to push buttons. I forgot my chapstick. I know. But I have something to drink. I should be okay. Sorry about the paper sounds, you guys. So, with that, I wish you all a very happy Sunday. Hope everybody has a good one. Thank you to everybody who voted for Roy Cycled. Oh, my gosh. In baby. the best of Safford. Thank you. It's over. The voting's over. Okay. We will find out on... David's causing problems. Wednesday. No, other businesses do the exact same thing. I know. Now, they're not on the board. Well, one of them is. Trisha asked for votes. Oh, yeah. And she's on the board with me. Okay. And uh, But we'll find out if Royce won on the 10th. One more and I could be Wolverine, dude. I should have started pouring these earlier. All right. We're out of here. Say goodbye, everybody. Okay. Bye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Okay. Good night, gentlemen. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, babe. So. Say it again. Goodbye, everybody. All right. There you go. You guys behave. <laughs> I have so much set up. You make it sound like that's so easy for him to do that. Okay. I see you a little bit. I'll see you a little bit. Okay. Can I kiss right there on my cheek? Thank you. Okay. I'll see you in a little bit. All right. Okay. Watch out for the cork. Good job. Bye, everybody. Okay, you guys. I have way too much planned but we are going to see what happens so my friend vance bye my friend vance dropped off a bunch of just regular cabinet doors and i love 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 these because you know you have like everything's already mitered and trimmed perfectly so it's really easy to make something using these and i'm going to do it with this side up because I want to make something and be able to hang like a little wreath or a little tag or something on here. Hey, Karen, um, be able to hang something on here. So I've already started. Okay, let me start. I'm sorry, y'all. My mind. I've gone through at least four plans just since I started setting up an hour ago. <laughs> I'm a hot mess. So. We're going to be using the new recycled um, spring blocks decoupage paper. Um, when I created this paper, I was very intentional. You guys have two um, um, like horizontal designs. That's not the word I was looking for, but I'll take it. And these are like super cute country size that are framed. And this one is like a castle. And I even put some sheep right there in the front. And then you have um, two portrait designs, right? Landscape and portrait, that's what I was looking for. So you have two portrait designs on here too. But tonight, we're only gonna be using this one. I love these trees, look so fresh and springy, right? So that's what we're gonna be using. My original plan was just to paint the edges and then fussy cut the frame out and make a background in the middle. And then I decided that I would use um, the new faux um, boys um, mold from ILD because the reason why I was either gonna fussy cut it or use the mold is because this picture is barely too short, right? Just too short. 
So um, I think if we frame out the inside with this skinny piece of bamboo here, that that would look really, really beautiful on here. So I'm going to be pouring more um, resin. I know I have too much planned, y'all. I am acutely aware of the fact that we have too much planned. We may have to finish next week, but I want to do it all. And then I pulled out some Would You Bend because I was going to put them on here because I want to use milk paint tonight. And I was like, what is the point of doing milk paint and distressing if I don't have details, right? But then I remembered that I haven't had a chance to play with the other new mold from ILD, uh, which is the Verities. If I'm not saying it right, I, I don't know. Uh, but these leaves are absolutely gorgeous and the details are beautiful. So I want to add some of the leaf details around the edge. Happy Sunday. Hey, Tammy. And so I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. I don't even know where to start. Let's paint this white and then I'll set this aside and then we'll start with um, our resin because we have a lot of resin to cast tonight. So I'm going to be using just some Antique Via, which is just a warm white from Wise Owl. You can use any white that you have to go under your decoupage. And I don't have to paint white under my decoupage, but when I decoupage with this paper, it's gonna become a little transparent. And so this design in particular is really light. And so this dark wood would show through and it would minimize the brightness of the artwork that's on the decoupage paper. So I'm gonna paint white underneath because I really do want my decoupage to kind of be the star of the show. So we'll do a quick coat of white paint while we catch up tonight. Um, what has everybody been up to? That mold, I'm super excited about this mold because they were really, really smart because you have like transition pieces. So you have these like crossbars um, that you can use. So like if I was doing, let's say if I was doing molds like across the whole thing, um, I could use my crossbars to connect all my pieces. And I also have corner pieces on here. And because of the way that they're made with this kind of um, like the bump from the bamboo, no matter how I cut it, it it's going to match, like it's going to look good. Um, and so I'm going to have to pour several of these to be able to cover this whole thing. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and paint really quickly and we'll start casting our resin so that I can get all my molds. If I had thought of this before, like right now, I probably would have done these ahead of time. But I did not. I always tell myself I'm going to do something simple and then my mind just keeps ruminating. <laughs> Thank you so much for sprinkling. I appreciate that. Is it Aracillus? Oh, Lord. Aracillus? Is that how you pronounce it? Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? So I'll know how to pronounce it. Hey, Sandy. Good evening, Luann. So let's just do a quick coat of white paint, and it doesn't have to be um, perfect because we're going to do a distress finish over this piece anyways. And we're going to be like kind of back and forth, I think, um, between casting and painting this piece out. And I don't, need, I don't even need it to be full coverage. I just need to have a coat on here. And for this piece, I probably should have primed it. I cannot tell a lie, but I did... Um, I cleaned it and I used a um, sanding pad when I cleaned it. So you can see that it's not shiny. It was shiny when I started. So I used a sanding pad and I scrubbed it really, really good. And I used some alcohol to remove like any kind of, with kitchen cabinets, although I have a feeling, well, no, cause these were from Vance's house. So these were actually used, but um, I scored a group of doors at the thrift store and I think that they were um, samples from a cabinet store. So I have quite a few doors to work with. So lots of signs to make. Oh my gosh, Tammy, right? No, Tammy, no David tonight. He's on grandpa duty. And Damar is just not going to sit still. There is way too much to get into in grandma's shop. <laughs> so um, he's on grandpa duty this Sunday. So they're inside, no doubt, watching um, 
the music videos, like little people's music videos. I swear I'm going to sing Them Bones is like stuck in my head. I'm singing it all day long. Hey, Mary from Central Illinois. How's the weather over there? The weather is crazy over here. It's like warm today. Yesterday, we literally had a freezing advisory. And then today is like warm and beautiful, like a spring day. Hey, Nancy. So like I wake up every morning and I, I don't know what's gonna happen. And so, um, I'm gonna dry this really quickly. Hey, Jerry from Wisconsin. I love this dryer. It's not really a dryer. It's supposed to be for embossing, but you guys know how we crafters do. We will make use of stuff to do whatever we want to do with them. I'm curious. We weren't here last Sunday because it was Easter. We had a nice, quiet Easter. You guys, so my son says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to host um, Easter Sunday. So I'm like, oh, cool. And then he's like, so what are you going to cook? <laughs> So I cooked it home and hauled it over to his house. But we had a nice quiet day. We just hung out um, and just spend some time together. You know, it's funny. Um, one of my cousins was like, don't you guys have any pictures from Easter? And we don't have any. We were just in the moment. We weren't taking pictures. We were just hanging out and enjoying each other's, and enjoying each other's company. So there's no evidence, but our memories is good. Oh my gosh, Angie Champagne is going tomorrow um, to view the eclipse in 100% totality. Where is that going to be, Angie? Rained all day, sunny tomorrow for the eclipse. Oh, wow. Oh, you scored a bunch of samples of doors, right? It's been raining here in, I want to say, Ottawa. You guys should see my setup. I have a rubber band holding my tablet onto my stand. <laughs> so my, one of my, my online business manager lives in um, Canada and we had a call on Tuesday and she shows me outside and they had like a foot of snow, but like last week was warm. So I don't know. I think spring is hesitant to come this year. We're gonna put one more coat and then we'll set this aside so we can work on our molds. Now you guys notice that I completely dried my first coat before adding my second coat. Sometimes um, I get questions from people about like coverage or um, if they're layering different products, maybe something didn't work the way they thought it would. But a lot of times it's because of lack of patience, you guys. If you're layering um, products and you want to have the benefit of having that layered effect, you, um, you really want to let them dry in between. Otherwise, you're just reactivating what's underneath and you're just, you're reapplying the same product. You're not really having individual layers. And so um, I wanted to make sure that first layer was dry before I put on my second coat so that I would actually have the benefit of better coverage. And my, you guys notice I'm not being perfect, and it's because we're going to do a distressed finish around the edges of this. But first, I need to make the leaves. I guess we'll start with the leaves. We may not make it to the bamboo tonight. I have a feeling that the bamboo may end up um, being cast next week. Because that's going to be the frame out, the decoupage. But we have a lot to do around the edge. And I'm thinking I want to do metallic on my bamboo. Aw, you guys are missing David. Buffalo, New York is going to be cloudy. Oh, you might not be able to see the eclipse. I think we're only going to have like four minutes of the eclipse. I think it's from what I understand, four and a half minutes here in Arizona. I believe that is what I read. So... Let's set this aside. So we'll set the door aside and let's work on our um, 
um, our mold. And you guys, this color green, which I guess I'm going to use it again because I'm going to have to paint over my leaves, is um, it's dried thyme is what I'm using. This is ILD, I mean, um, um, a Wise Owl color. And I chose this color because um, pink and I, this pink in the trees is what I want to draw out. It's so pretty. And you guys know I'm not a pink girl, but I'm really liking this pink. So um, I really want to draw out this pink. And so I'm going to use green in the background, but I don't want my green to compete. And so I picked a really neutral green to go on the background, but we're also going to do some layers on this. But let's set this aside and let it dry. And let's focus on getting our leaves done first. And I'm going to be using Illuminite's um, the quick set and this sets, I think it's seven minutes is what this one is the time for this one. And my resin cup, which looks like it needs to be thrown away, but it's still useful. <laughs> it's received a lot of love. I, I mean, not resin. This is my resin cup, but it's, um, oh my gosh, you guys, I keep losing words. Like I'm, I'm beginning to worry at this point. Um, I love these cups because they're flexible. So if I'm pouring in like a really detailed mold, like um, the letter molds from ILD where you have like tiny pieces, I can squeeze this and I can really control how I pour. So I love these cups and you can tell because this one gets used a lot. And I'm using popsicle sticks tonight because I cannot find my resin stirs. They're somewhere. I don't know where they are. But this resin comes in a two-part resin. It's A and B. And I know a lot of people are afraid. Silicone, thank y'all. Help me out. Y'all already know. Um, and so I, I know, like, everyone has different um, processes that how they mix their resin. You can mix A and B in separate containers, equal amounts, and then pour them in another container. That's fine. I just like to keep um, all of mine in one container. So this is just a personal preference. And on these cups, there's measurements, but you can't see them unless you're like 25. So I mark mine with um, a marker so I can see what I'm doing. So I am going to mix together. I wanna say, let's start with 40 mils. So this bottom line right here is 20 mils. And this one right here is 40. So I'm gonna put 20 of A and then I'm gonna pour up to 40 of B and then I'll know that I have equal parts of each one, right? You know what? So um, Amazing Casting Resin is made by Illuminite. So it's literally the same brand. Um, this one, this is, I guess, the parent company, but the Amazing Casting Resin is the name of the product. So it's literally the same product. I think this one is just Illuminite because it's in larger bottles than the Amazing Casting Resin, but I, lose, I use a lot of resin. So I usually buy the bigger bottles. That's a good question, Amanda. Thank you. So it's the same. And this is a white resin too, which is why I, I like it. I remember a long time ago, I used to, they used to have a clear fast casting resin, but I can't find it anymore. And I bought some, but it did not dry clear. It dried cloudy. I was so disappointed. Hey, Rima. Girl, you're not late. You're fine. We're just getting started. Oh man. Do I have, okay. I thought I was gonna have to fight with this bottle, you guys. I was prepared for the fights. So I poured my A up to 20, and now I'm going to pour my B up to 40. And I love um, this. It's seven minutes. I love the timing because it's fast enough for me to not get impatient, but it's not so fast that I end up with resin casting in my cup. They used to have a three-minute resin. Oh, my gosh, you guys. I literally have a picture of me with the, me pouring resin. <laughs> that explains why you can't see because you're 26. Oh, I understand. Yes. They do that with everything. Even on my Instapot, I use some metallic paint on my finger and I just ran over the top of those numbers so I could see y'all because I can't see what it says. They just do the rays and they keep it the same color. Somebody needs to call them and tell them not to do that. Hey, Pamela, you are fine, girl. We are just getting started. And a question that I get um, a lot of times is, do you have to dust your mold when you're using resin? And you don't. But if I were using clay in my resin, I would need to dust. And my favorite thing to dust them with when I'm using clay is cornstarch. It works really well. 
And so, you know what? And this is 30 mil and 30 mil. So I didn't pour enough resin, but it's okay. We will work it out. Because I only poured 40. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the big leaf and then I'll do the small one. IOD just keeps coming up with better and better ideas for their molds. Um, for this set, they added the name on the side of the molds. So if you have them stacked somewhere, you can still see which mold it is, which is really nice. And you guys know that they have the micro rim, which is probably more important when you're working with clay. It makes it a lot easier to be able to um, get your clay molds even on the back so it's easier to glue them down. I think I'm only going to do 20 for the next one. Um, and then I think like a year ago, they started adding the mills so that you know exactly how much resin you need to pour. I think I'm still going to do 40 because I'm going to do a couple of those small pieces too. On the mold, it tells you exactly how much resin you need for each design. So you're not like flying blind, although I never um, like waste resin. If I have too much in my cup, I'll find something to pour it into and I'll cast it. And I have like a little bin where I keep all my casts and then I use them whenever I need to. My favorite ones to use are the letters because um, I feel like I'm always missing a letter when I'm working with resin. Yeah, Tammy, right? Hey, Teresa. Girl, I, these are bifocals. This is how bad it is. So Teresa's making fun of me because I'm looking over my glasses. The sad part is these are bifocals. They're transitional lenses, but I don't know why I still look over my glasses when I, I could look, you know, on the bottom. Um, so Dorothy's asking, is this resin on Amazon? I do I order directly. Um, I get it from Amazon, Dorothy. Dorothy knows Dorothy's moved to the big city now. So she has a lot more options, but I'm still out here in the sticks, Dorothy. So we have to order stuff offline because it's just not here. So I'm going to finish this one. And these are fairly thin. So oddly enough, because they're thinner, they're actually going to take a little longer to set. Um, when you pour deeper molds, the resin actually produces its own heat. So it sets up faster. So the thinner or the less resin that you use, um, th the longer it takes. Isn't that weird? You would think it would be just the opposite. Um, I'll go ahead and do a couple of, well, I'll do a corner, I guess. I should have had a plan because it's getting thicker. I can see it. I should have only poured 20, but I'm hard headed, you guys. Mm. Whoops. Waste not, want not, right? I'll get a head start on my trim. I'm not going to start the trim tonight. Um, I think we'll just, we'll agree to focus on that next week because I have way too much planned and I know we're not going to get through it all. And so you guys will see this is already starting to um, set up. So we'll set the resin aside. I think those are the only two pieces I'm going to use so that we can finish. And one thing that you can do, like if you're in a hurry, which I usually am, you can, um, you know, use... And this dryer isn't really hot. Like I wouldn't use an like the heat guns that you use when you're peeling um, paint off of your dressers. I don't know if I would go to my molds with that much heat, but this generates just a little bit of heat. So you can kind of speed up the curing process by adding some heat. 
Um, but I think we're going to be okay. We'll just let this set up by itself and we'll circle back to our piece. Let me make space. If you guys saw my shop, you guys will laugh so hard. It is a hot mess in here. I really need to spring. I need to come in here and do some spring cleaning. I'm going to set this out of the way. Look at that. I didn't pour enough um, resin in there. Dag nabbit. It's okay. So I wanted something chippy. Um, yeah, Dorothy, it's like opposite than it should be. Oh, I miss you too, Dorothy. Although we're in, we haven't been in Tucson for a while. I'll have to call you the next time we come. I wanted to do something that was like chippy and I haven't worked with milk paint in a while. So I thought it'd be fun for us to do some milk paint. So I brought a few supplies tonight because I kind of want to do multiple layers because why not be complicated? I should just do two layers. Huh? I should just do two layers and be happy. But you guys, we'll do two layers. I was gonna, I wanna do three, but we'll just do the two layers. So I have my base coat of paint on here. And my next layer that I wanna put, put on here is cracked gesso. And um, it's from Amy Howard, because I wanna create um, some distress, some natural distress. Actually, I can't even do that yet, because I need to put my mold on first. I am fired. Let's decoupage, we'll decoupage as soon as this gets dry. Can you go back um, and pour more? Oh yeah, I can go back and pour more resin. It's just a little bit. I think it's gonna be okay. My piece is gonna be distressed anyways. So um, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal if that one isn't perfect. It'll actually maybe make this look a little bit more um, like authentic if I have a mold that's not perfect. Because if you guys ever buy really ornate frames from the thrift store, a lot of times they have pieces that are broken off because they were made with plaster. Hey, Ari, how are you? Miss Ariana, how are you feeling? It is unpredictable, I know. I think you might have... Um, Did I? Did I resonate to the back of my board? Oh, Lord, of course I did. I'm so used to my mat, I know nothing's gonna stick to it, so I don't worry about it. Um, but I didn't think about the back of my piece. We'll just stick that over there. These mats, you guys, I love them so much. It's like a 10 foot roll. Um, and I just cut to size exactly what I need. I love it so much. And it's like less than $20 for this roll. So that's going to bother me all the, let me, we'll just put a piece of tissue paper over that resin. So it's not bothering me. And I'm not going to worry about it sticking to this mat. Cause I really have yet to find anything that sticks to this mat really well. So while my leaves are curing, I guess we can go ahead and start decoupaging. Hey, Linda, where have you been? What is the mat made of? It's made of silicone. So it's a 10 foot roll of silicone mat. Um, it's not super thick, but it's not thin either. And you guys, I've gotten to the point where <laughs> I use this for everything. Um, I use it for paint palettes because it's super, like even if I'm working with acrylic paint, I can just peel it off and it comes right off. Um, when I take my scraps and I just decoupage them all to this and I overlap them, I can pull them off and I end up with like a new sheet to use for my collage. Um, I use them to work on like we're working here today because I seriously have yet to find anything that will stick to them. So I just clean it and then I reuse it over and over again. Usually if I'm cutting a new piece, it might be because maybe I've been invited to teach a class and you guys know how it is when you got to do stuff in front of company, you have to pull out the nice china. You can't be using the stuff you've used already. Um, what is the 10 foot roll on your Amazon page? It is in my Amazon shop. I think I have, 
do I not have a QR code for my, this here's a QR code from my Amazon shop. If you're not on your phone, you can use it, um, but it'll take you right to my shop and it's under my favorite things, I believe. Um, you can find the roll of silicone mat that's under, that's on there. And seriously, you guys, I love it so much. And I find that I use it a lot for things that I used to use my um, parchment paper for, which sometimes I still use parchment paper, but the thing about the silicone mat is I can clean it and use it over and over again. So it's just more sustainable. Oh my goodness, Ari has 27, 13 more weeks to go before our granddaughter is here. 13 more weeks. Okay, you guys. It's a little bit too tall, but I'm just scoring it with my nails right where it ends so I know where to cut. And I could use my um, my X-Acto knife inside of there, but I'm going to go ahead and just make the cut. And I think I'm not really focused on perfection because I know we're gonna do a distressed finish and nothing is gonna be perfect. Well, it's gonna be perfectly imperfect. We'll say that. Hey, Susan. From Texas, from where in Texas? Brownfields, Texas? Is that um, West Texas or East Texas? I'm just curious. I have a lot of family in Central Texas that I don't really know, uh, like really well. It's bad. My grandmother would be so disappointed. Okay, so I have my decoupage paper and let me see. I've been, I am like all in on the silicone for crafts anyways. I don't know about for cooking. They keep telling me it's safe to cook in, but I just, I don't know y'all. It just doesn't feel right. And so this is my silicone cup and this medium has been in here for about a month and it finally dried out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. But this is the cool thing about the cups. This is in my store too. So this medium has dried out and I know it's a lot, just shame on me, but we didn't have a live and I haven't been too busy, but it just pops right out. And see, my cup is still clean. So I don't have to scrub it or anything, it's done. I might find something to do with this. I'm gonna set it aside. And so I'm just going to use um, some Wise Owl varnish on this because this is what I have. I don't think I'm going to be using transfers with this project, although maybe. Look, I don't have David in here to open my jars for me, so I got to make it work. I won't put as much just in case, although I do plan to be here next Sunday. I love that you guys talk to each other. Hopefully it's like a, a, um, a weekly get together when we all come. So I'm gonna spritz my paper first and I'm not wetting it, you guys. I'm just like spritzing it just to moist. I'm just moistening it a little bit and um, I'm gonna pre-stretch it so that when I add my decoupage medium, like it's done reacting. So it's not gonna react again, right, to my medium. And I'm just going to center this. And then we'll decoupage from one side to the other. And somebody made a comment that they don't see me using my plastic as much. And part of it is because with the misting method, I don't really have to smooth it out as much because it's not responding. So there really isn't anything to smooth out because once I st stretch it, and I'm, I'm being pretty delicate, right? Um, it's already stretched, so it's not going to stretch anymore when I add my decoupage medium. Let's see. The Texas Hill Country. Oh, okay. Oh, you'll be just outside the path of the total eclipse tomorrow. Right? It comes out so easy. And it's one of the things I really love about all of... Um, these products is because they clean up super easy. 
And y'all know I am not a good steward of my craft supplies. So easy cleanup is my best friend. I'm going to lay out a nice even coat. And I always look from the side a little bit because the light will bounce off. Um, and anywhere where I see a dry spot, I know there's not enough product. So I like to just look from the side and make sure. And my edges don't have to be perfect because we're going to be putting a mold around the edges, right? And the thing about this tissue is um, it's stronger than napkins. So if I have like a little ripple or wrinkle, um, I still have the flexibility to be able to mess with my paper a little bit without it tearing. Now, it's still tissue paper, so you can't be too rough, but just a little bit. And you guys, I do have a decoupage um, masterclass. I don't know how many new people we have at RoyCycledAcademy.com where I go like take deep dives into decoupage and we talk about all the things, not all the things, a lot of the things though, um, around decoupage. So you guys can check that out if you're interested because I really do love decoupage. I love how it just transforms um, surfaces so easily and quickly. I'm going to go ahead and just lay down the rest of my medium. This is a fairly small area. If you're working on furniture, um, you want to be more mindful and work in sections. And you not only want to make sure when you look to the side that you've covered everywhere and you don't have any dry spots, but you want to have equal coverages. I get a lot of messages for people who have issues with the iron on decoupage method, like after the fact. And generally it's because maybe you put down medium, but you didn't put down as much as you put in the other parts. And so um, you didn't get as much adhesion. And so that bubble will come up um, if you have like any kind of a humidity or um, if there is a lot of heat. But if you use a traditional method, you don't have that problem, which is why I prefer traditional. But I do teach the iron-on because I know um, that there are people who prefer that method. And so now that we have it down, I'm going to go ahead and seal it because we're going to be putting a lot of layers on here. So if anything gets on here, I want to be able to um, seal it right away. And this edge, I have some overlap, so I'm kind of being careful not to get any decoupage medium behind it because I want to be able to go in in a few minutes um, once it's completely dry and trim that extra paper off. Oh, I know. It's true, Dorothy is saying that she has her stencils like soaking right now. You know, they have those totes, the ones that you buy during the holidays to like put your roll of wrapping paper in. They're like big and they're not really deep, but you could probably fit a significant number of stencils in there and then pop the top on there until you get ready to wash them. Okay. And so that's the decoupage. You guys... I had so much fun designing these spring designs and I think it was because I was so finished with winter and I was ready. I was ready for spring to be here. And I don't know, sometimes when I um, show the decoupage papers on camera, there are a lot of details that you guys, it's really, really hard to show on here. but. Um, in this little meadow, there are just the cutest little sheep. Um, you guys see those? Oh, aren't they so cute? And they're just hanging out in there. And then the background of this has like um, a linen texture. And then there's a floral, um, a really faint floral behind the linen. So even though it looks plain, it really isn't. Thank you, Didi. 
Oh, Debbie, we don't steal ideas. We are inspired. That's what we are. What is the medium you're using? Holly, I'm using Wise Owl's um, matte varnish, but you can use any water-based sealer. So if you have crystal clear, send, what is it? You guys help me out. All the brands have like a clear coat or a top coat. You can use those. And I generally decoupage with my clear coat because that's what I have on my table. You can use Mod Podge um, if that's your preference. It really literally is a matter of preference. I do like these because they're thinner and they're less tacky and I feel like I have fewer problems. Hey, Patty. Oh, no. I am so sorry, Patty. I hope that it's gonna be a surgery that brings you to like a good place. I know, I guess I should say lambs because they are babies, huh? Yeah, Billy, you can water your, um, I used to, when I, when I first started teaching decoupage, I would say you can water your Mod Podge down to like, um, I don't know, like 2% milk. <laughs> Everything is food for me, you guys. But yes. And you guys, if you're looking for recycled decoupage papers, um, I think I've seen a couple of recycled retailers on here. So if you are a retailer for recycled treasures, please put the link where customers can find the paper. Um, I know you guys get frustrated because you can't buy the paper directly from the site, but I partner with a lot of small businesses. And so I don't want to align myself um, to compete with them. And so I drive all the traffic to them. And if you partner with a recycled retailer, they generally sell paint, transfers, they have stencils, all the things. So if you're stuck on a project and you have a partner in crime, you can message them and they'll be willing to help you out and answer questions. They should be. I shouldn't say they should be. I shouldn't shit on other people. Generally speaking, they'll help you and answer questions. It looks like a pocket watch, does it? I like pocket watches. Okay, so we have our decoupage down and we have it um, sealed. I can still feel that there's some moisture in here. So this little lip, I'm not gonna trim it just yet because I know that if there's any moisture and I try to cut this with my X-Acto knife, I'll end up tearing the paper and I won't get a nice cut. So we're gonna just wait. Um, but our leaves are ready. So let's pop them out. Now, when I'm working with uh, resin, I will just pop these out just like this. But if this were clay, um, clay is still soft when you take it out of your molds. So if it were clay, I would put it face down and tap it and then I would pull it up and roll it back and allow the clay to pop out so that I don't distort um, my piece by pulling on it. But this is resin. It's not going to really pull that easy. Um, I haven't. I'm honestly, you guys, I, it takes a lot <laughs> to sell. And so, um, I'm just always thoughtful about what I have like time and energy to give to. And so, um, I can't do all the things, but, um, so I don't sell the plain paper. Because whatever I do has to make sense. And you guys know what? I did not make sure that I had some quick and thick. I know I have some, but where is the question? Well, I'll find it in a few minutes because I want to get this down. Um, now, it might be kind of cool. So if I wasn't going to put trim on here, I would just push this leaf down in here and add some heat and let it mold around. Maybe I don't need to put trim. Maybe I can just use paint to blend this paper in. Because how cool would that be to have the leaves kind of wrap around a little bit? What do you guys think? Should I just forget about the molds and let the leaf wrap around? Or should I cut that leaf? Ch -ch -ch -ch. 
Decisions, decisions. I don't even know if I'm gonna use these. That is kind of pretty right there though. Wrap the leaves, love the wrapping, right? I think we're gonna do the wrapping and then I'll just have to try to match that paper and paint those. I think I'll be okay because we're gonna do a distress finish anyways. So I think I'll just pull my distress paint onto my paper a little bit, which means I'm gonna to have to cut this. So, and I don't even know if I have my X-Acto knife. Oh Lord, I am out of order. Which, if you've been here for a while, you know that that is usually the case. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just use my scissors, and I'm not going to get a perfect cut, but we're going to pull the distressed paint into the paper anyway, so I think we'll be okay. But if you're trimming your paper, and you want to get a nice, clean trim, you want to, um, A, make sure that your paper is glued all the way to the edge of your inset. Um, B, make sure that it's completely dry. Often the um, decoupage medium will pull in the corners. And so even when it feels dry here, you may still have medium um, that's pulled in your corners. And so it may not be completely dry. So when you think it's dry, wait a little longer before you start trimming. Um, and then C, make sure that your, um, whatever you're using to cut your paper is really, really sharp so that you're cutting your paper and you're not tearing it. And that way you'll get a nice clean cut um, if you're ever decoupaging an inset, like if you're working on a buffet or any kind of a door or any project where you're, you know, it's dropped in because we can't sand our edges here, right? But we're going to make this look kind of old and worn. If you wrap, maybe put on small leaves on the paper. Oh, that's a good idea, Dorothy. Hey, Yvonne. Good evening. Lee said, I'm here too. You're, you're on um, Facebook and you, on the YouTubes, as David would say. I know there's no misbehaving comment commentary tonight, y'all. I'm sorry. David, I'm, although I'm sure he's watching on YouTube, he's probably making comments in the comments that I don't see, isn't he? I'm just drawing my brush off because I have a little bit here that's not tacked down. So I'm going to go in and get that tacked down before we move on to um, getting these glued down and getting another coat of the dried thyme over the top of my leaves. Oh, Lord. For some reason, I never get like all the way to the end. I think I'm so focused on making sure I get even coverage in the middle that I don't get all the way out to my edges. So generally, I have to go back in and just make sure all of my edges are tacked down really well before I move on. Okay. If I put leaves on the paper too, I'm going to have to, um, I over poured this one. So it's kind of rounded. It's not really flat, but I have all these little leaves so I could kind of add them to my paper. That would be kind of cute, right? I wonder if I should. Mm, I like it better up there. But definitely these ones, we'll just put them randomly on there. But we'll have to paint those first. So let's get these glued down. I have two bottles of glue. I was, you guys hate, you guys know how when you see something somewhere and you like see it specifically exactly how it looks, but you don't remember where. That's where I am. Have you used spe the specimens with your cloche stencil? or on wires and a close yet, I see you are a big, I know. I have not had a chance to play. I cannot tell a lie. We did a book 
Sunday, the two Sundays prior to Easter, we did a book and um, we did a cloche and we use the specimens mold on that one. And I also use a bug on that one. It's kind of like a little jewel on the top of my book, but I have not had a chance to play as much as I want to at all. Hey, Karen, how are you? We have been, ooh, that's like perfect because this is from the specimens mold right here, this little mold. So we'll paint this and we'll make, we'll be sure and add this here on the bottom. And I have the stamp, although I think I took it in the house. You guys, let me find glue. I think, oh, it's right here. And both bottles, just like I imagined, are right here together. So when I am um, gluing my molds, I prefer, and it's literally a preference, type bond quick and thick. The reason why I like it is because it gets tacky super fast. So I can usually move forward on my work fairly quickly. Sometimes when you use like wood glue, it stays wet forever and your stuff is like sliding around and you can't really move forward on your project. I don't like that. Right, Amanda? Darn work keeps getting in the way of the crafting. So we have um, really changed the model of our business and I spend a lot of time in our warehouse nowadays. I think yesterday um, we pulled together about 53 orders that will go out first thing tomorrow. So um, a lot of time in the warehouse. So I don't have as much time to play. My thing is kind of um, stopped up with glue. So I'm just gonna go in there and clean that out real quick. And I'm using a cleaning tool. They use clay, anybody who does clay, you probably recognize these, but you can buy these in an entire pack and there's like different points on either side and I love having them on my table because um, they come in really handy for different things. Hey Joanne, you haven't missed much girl. We decoupaged and I've talked more than anything tonight. Yeah, the resin and the molds, I do love it. I really, really do. I, this mold is so pretty, right? And it's really gonna become more like an ornament on here. So I'm not gonna paint it like to look realistic like I would if it was like a toadstool or a flower, but I still think it's gonna be pretty. And I feel like this particular mold. So I remember when I first started crafting, most of the molds were like trim pieces or like, you know, floor de lis they were just like these really organic, I mean, ornate pieces that you can add to things. And so all I used to do is just, you know, you glue them to something and then you paint it to match your project. You may go in with like some glaze, right, to highlight the details or go over the high points with the metallic. But um, in the last couple of years, there's been a lot of like flowers and toadstools and different kinds of molds. Um, and so I've had to really change the way I paint my molds. I have a sunflower mold over here right now. I got to get a project video done for my membership. I got to get it done and get it to my online business manager in time for a Tuesday's email, y'all. So I got to hop to it. Um, but I'll be demonstrating how to um, paint it, how to utilize our knowledge of paint of color um, to paint it to be really pretty. I think it's clean now, you guys. <laughs> I always improvise. Yes. Don't we all? And the thing about resin is if you apply heat to your resin, it will get um, pliable again, like early on. If it's a week later and it's already um, cured, It'll bend a little bit, but not as much. But like this is just barely cured. So I'm going to be applying heat to it. And um, the heat is gonna help me to form my leaves around the frame. Because it's gonna get more flexible. And I'm gonna drive myself crazy a little bit because I would like for these to be um, the same on either side, but I have a feeling I'm not gonna be able to do it. Symmetry is not my strength. 
save the tops of those bottles of quick and thick the new ones don't have really oh that's jacked up that's like my my protein powder the new ones don't even come with the dang um scoop what the heck so i have to save my scoop out of my old container so i can use them with the new one we miss david i'm sorry i know i'm boring because I'm only going to talk about the crafting. Unless you guys bring up something else interesting. So I want this to bend right here. And it's not bending because of this connection. So I'm going to just snip this right here. And what that's going to do is free it up so that I can form it around this corner. But it's not going to impact like the integrity of the design. When I paint it, it's still going to look the same. But by making that little clip right there, I'm able to kind of, well, not kind of, it can completely, they can move independently now. So I can get that. Ouch. This little booger gets hot. Yeah, I saw that she did the super cute wreath with the toadstools. So pretty. Let me get one of my little, this will work because I am burning my finger trying to hold this down. And the heat kind of makes the glue dry faster too, which is nice. Is there a reason you chose not to paint the molds before gluing them down? Girl, that would have been too smart. I was actually thinking, I do like painting my molds on my surface because inevitably you have small gaps and you can fill them by pushing paint in there. Honestly, I didn't think about it because I should have put my molds on before I paint it, but if you were here early on, you would have heard me talk about how I had a specific plan that did not include this mold. And so my brain kept going. And so here we are. So I'm improvising. So I use air dry clay to make some molds. Now that they are dry, how do I make them super strong? You can just seal them, Zoe. Zoe Panette. It's Zoe, right? Not Zoe. You can seal them with a nice, a really um, quality like varnish, clear coat, and you'll be fine. <laughs> Billy, she says she appreciates me talking about the crafting. That's why she's here. I know people appreciate David, though. You know, it's so funny. Years ago, I have been going live once a week for years now, you guys. I know we miss some Sundays, but pretty much every Sunday we're here. We started because I couldn't focus. Well, back then I had my phone on a wine bottle on the other side of the room, so I couldn't see the comments. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I had a hair tie on a wine bottle. Um, and I couldn't see the comments. So I asked David if he would just come read comments and it has evolved into like what it is today over time which I think is funny because he was like, I don't know if I can do that. I'm like, yeah, you can. It'll be fine. And now he comes and he's misbehaving every week, which I love. I enjoy having him here. But I just cut the stem off of that leaf because I wanted it to come out of there a little bit differently than it was. And if you work with your molds, you know, early on, you still have a lot of flexibility, as you can see, right? Even though it's resin, um, I can still clip it. A lot of times people get nervous about overpouring their resin, but you can, you can literally just snip them off, any of the overpours. Billy says she's done the same thing with propping her phone, right? We got to make it work. We got to do, do what we got to do to make it work. It's a make it work moment. Does anybody watch Project Runway? Tim Gunn always says, make it work. 
And I guess my leaves don't need to lay down perfectly, but I feel like I want them to be secured onto um, my surface so that they're stronger and they don't like break or something later. Um, I need a not so good brush. I don't wanna use one of my line brushes. Cause this glue, I don't think it ever, it dried before it got to. It's gonna take me all night just to get these molds done. I know, Tammy. I think he'll be back next week. I'm pretty sure. I don't think we have the boy next Sunday. My son works 45 minutes away in the copper mine in the neighboring county. So when he's working, we have the boy. I'm going to have to just be okay with that leaf because I don't, I mean, I could get it to lay down, but I don't have the patience to do it right now. Look, I'm ready to move on to the other side, you guys. Oh, that's funny, Dorothy. You know, I was thinking today um, just how incredibly blessed I am. I mean, I always think about it, but sometimes I get so caught up in like doing better, doing better that I forget to just stop and appreciate like where I am. Because I remember a few years ago when we um, bought this, this shed, right? You guys know, I have a shed in my backyard. It's my, I say studio because it sounds fancier. <laughs> but it's a she shed. Hey, Sonnet, how are you? I know we're a little early. Well, I guess we're the same time for everybody else, but we're earlier for us. But we didn't move. But I just have a she shed in my backyard, you guys. That's my studio, my fancy studio. But um, I was so excited when we got this because I used to have to set up for every live, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but... Oh, you got to pull the table out. You got to set it up and pull out all your supplies. And inevitably, I will forget something important. <laughs> I had somebody tell me once I need to get myself together. I knew that they weren't my people, though, so it was fine. But it was just funny. People have expectations of us, even though we're like literally showing up and serving, you know. Um, anyways, people are people-y sometimes. Did I, I almost put that on upside down and you guys were gonna let me. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip this one now cause we know we're gonna have to do that. And I'm gonna try to be symmetrical. Although you guys know symmetry is not my strength. And see how those leaves we didn't pour. Oh, you guys can't see them. That we didn't pour all the way. It's, it's gonna look like, I think it's gonna ultimately look more authentic because it's not perfect. I know I gotta clip that leaf so I can get it to lay down. And I'm actually not gonna have to fight this one as hard because there isn't as much leaf. It's kind of symmetrical. That's pretty nice. It's pretty good. Sonnet. <laughs> it takes a lot of work, right? To get everything together. Will the heat bubble the paint? I'm being super careful. That's a really good question. Um, so if I were to hold this heat in one place for a long time, it would probably bubble the paint, but you notice that I'm moving it all the time, right? So that I'm not applying like a ton of heat in one spot for a really long time. And this heat gun is small, but mighty. Let me tell you guys, cause it gets hot. And I actually think I'm happy with that placement. This leaf on the side is not gonna wrap around. I mean, it would wrap around if I were patient. Like if I could tape it down and walk away and come back, but y'all know I'm not gonna do that. So we're just gonna get it on here so we can at least start. Cause I feel I'm, I'm gonna run out of time. I'm so sad. But if this was wood glue, it would still be sliding all over the place. Symmetry is overrated. <laughs> 
This is true, Kimberly. Balance is better than symmetry, but these two items are literally the same, so it's a little bit different. But yes, I always, I don't know if you guys notice, I'm sure you do. When I first started designing papers, I would drive people crazy because they wanted my pieces to be symmetrical. Um, and they just weren't because I, I think um, asymmetry, if you can create balance with asymmetry, it makes a more interesting piece. This is my personal preference. Everybody is, you know, has their own preferences, but that's mine. I remember in geometry in high school, our instructor, um, I guess, like for the human eyes, the more symmetrical your, um, your eyes and stuff are, the more beautiful you seem. And so we had to like measure our symmetry. I was not the most beautiful person in the room, y'all. <laughs> Which was fine. As a matter of fact, I remember Tanya Lewis was the most symmetrical. Ooh, oh my gosh. She has a huge shack in the back with electricity. Yeah, we had to get ours wired. This project is actually pretty fun. Those of you who've been following me for a while, you guys probably remember that um, when we got it, because I kind of posted videos of them bringing it in. It was so interesting watching them drive it. Like, it's, it's not huge, but it's like 32 feet by, no, it's more than that. It's big, right? And so they have this little like thing and they just drove it in here and they parked it on the pad. It was really interesting. Yeah, Flea, it's true. Okay, isn't that gonna be pretty? I'm gonna paint that out the same green and I'm gonna break the rules, but you guys just look away because I'm gonna paint out of this can because I do not have this particular color in a bottle and I'm just gonna break the rules. I'm sorry. So look away, but you're not supposed to paint directly out of your cans because you can deposit, oop, I'll start on this side. You can deposit, you know, germs, you know, bacteria or um, other stuff into your paint cans and because most of us are using chalk style, chalk style paint or, um, clay-based paints, they don't have a lot of chemicals in them. And so that bacteria can grow and ruin your can. So don't do, don't do like me, you guys. Don't paint out of your cans. We won't tell. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Um, you know what, Billy? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think beauty is in the, in the high of the, in the eye of the beholder. If I think if we're talking like from purely a, bio a biological standpoint, I would imagine that symmetry represents like good health. And so, you know, if you're looking for a mate and you're looking for somebody in good health, that might be um, an indication, but I, it's probably one of many indications of such. But I don't know. Mm. I think beauty comes from the inside and that's not just BS. Like, the older I get, the more I realize. Have you guys ever met somebody that looked absolutely beautiful and then after you get to know them, they, they literally look different? Um, so beauty's in the eye of the polder. There's so many things that define what each of us consider beautiful. And I'm stippling this instead of like, you know, painting it because there's so much detail in here. This really is a beautiful mold that I wanna make sure that I get paint into all the places. And you guys see how quickly the paint is adhering to this resin. Um, IOD, which is another um, change they've made to their molds over the last few years, is there's actually like a micro texture. You, you, you really can't even see the texture, but it's there. So even though this is resin, it's not completely smooth there's a little bit of a texture there. And so that tooth is actually why um, your paint adheres more readily to the newer molds than they do to the old ones. Cause you guys remember when you used to pop out a mold and it would be like super slick and you'd almost have to use a primer before you could start painting. But um, with the newer molds, there's a texture. So there's already a built tooth. 
I know, right? It looks pretty already. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Girl, this is not a classroom. You're not late. You're good. I'm just messing with the door. My community is so funny. Um, they all know that I like to upcycle. So my friends tag me on um, Facebook Marketplace or I come home and I have stuff in my yard. My ex-sister-in-law brought some stuff for me last week <laughs> to upcycle and repurpose. See, I don't even have to leave the house to misbehave. I have help. I have enablers. I have some white like closer to my paper, but I'm going to go in with a smaller brush so I just don't get like a whole bunch of green all over the place. I think I'm an 80s. I'm not an 80s baby. I was born in 70, but I think because I was a teenager in the 80s, I like green and pink together. Does anybody else in here like have a preference for green and pink as a combo? Although they are compliments, so it makes sense that they look good together, but... Um, I am just a little partial and I think it's because of my age. Okay, I'm going to use a little, I don't even know why I'm going for perfect coverage because I'm going to be going back over the top of this. I don't want to get a ton of green on my paper. I don't mind if I get a little bit. Because we're going to lose this edge anyways. You know what? I should just go ahead and do that. Because my paper didn't go all the way to the edge. So we're going to lose that edge anyways. So I'll just go ahead and put some green there now that I think about it. Yeah, right, Sheila? Oh, that sounds so beautiful. That rose twall is so pretty. You guys remember the original twall stamp from ILD? I think that's what that's the product that brought me to ILD. Um, they had this twall stamp. It was absolutely gorgeous. And somebody had taken it and they had stamped a bed. I don't know if any of you guys remember that. Um, and I saw it on Pinterest and I fell in love. And then I discovered ILD soon after. Well, that's when I discovered ILD. That was years ago. Okay, I'm going to look in the mirror and make sure that I like the way that's looking. Okay, I'm going to dry this. What time is it? Oh my gosh, it's 619. Why do I always think I can do so much in the hour and a half that we have together? Michaels has it. What does Michaels have? <laughs> Sonic has people drop stuff off all the time too, right? You know what? I think it's nice if you have stuff already and rather than just get rid of it, you can just repurpose it or not even repurpose it necessarily, but just kind of redefine it. Right. Because we have things. Styles come and go. I always say when I'm designing a space that um, the big things in the space, like the flooring, the furniture, I usually try to pick something like neutral that's going to live, you know, through all kinds of stuff. But like curtains and pillows and then wall paint is kind of in the middle like I I won't go super trendy with wall paint because painting the walls is work it's not like you know you get it done really quickly but it's fairly easy right so I'm kind of in the middle of the wall paint but then your curtains and your pillows and your art like that's the fun part you can swap it out and you know whenever you want to fairly easily so if you have something on your wall and you've like fallen out of love with it a little bit you can just give it some love. I wish someone would drop a functioning sewing mannequin. <laughs> 
I'm not even going to tell you how many mannequins I have. It's so ridiculous. So um, this poor girl, I'll try, let me try to see if I can show you guys. So this mannequin over here, you guys, I found this mannequin on, what is that, Dean? There's a, um, an app on your phone that I took off because it was just too much. And I went on here and this little girl, this beautiful cage mannequin, and it's Acme, it still has the sticker on it, was listed for $325, including shipping. Can you even believe that? And she was on my list. And you guys see I used um, one of the molds from IOD to kind of party her up. But she will never get painted or anything. She just lives here like this. I love her. And then um, I have another one over here. This one wasn't as old, but it's still caged. And she has been in the making for like a year now. I really need to get back to her and finish her. But I wanted to make her more like steampunky. So I have to get back to her someday. Someday I'll finish it, y'all. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Is that totally 80s? It's what it is, isn't it? I like it. Okay, so it's 622. This is what we're gonna do, you guys. We're gonna put our next two coats on here and then we'll say goodnight and then next week, but I'm liking it already. But that green is too dark. Like this looks fresh. So this green is gonna be kind of an under color. It's not gonna be our like final color. So I have a couple of things that I wanna use. I have cracked gesso from Amy Howard. I'm gonna put a layer of cracked gesso on there right now. And then um, I have some um, Strasboro, I guess is how you pronounce it, white. So this is some white milk paint. So my plan is, and I, and I brought out some Noir because I was gonna make a gray and then do the white. Actually, now that we'll be coming back next week, I'll have time for my original plan. Um, so the end result is gonna be fairly bright and this green will be peeking through, but I think it's gonna be super pretty. Thank you, Sonic. Girl, I have a thing for mannequins. I have so many mannequins in storage. It's just, you guys know how it is, right? I have chairs and mannequins are my like, my problem. <laughs> I have too many of, of both of them. So Rima is acting, asking what's cracked gesso. So cracked gesso, um, oh my gosh. Why are you asking a hard question, Rima? This will create like little cracks underneath my um, milk paint. So I'm gonna put the cracked gesso on here and I'm gonna let it dry. And what it does is it cracks so that when I put my milk paint over the top and the milk paint is really, really thin. So when I put my milk paint over the top of it, it's gonna create these really pretty, um, and they're really, they're not super, um, you can't see them right away. So it's really subtle. And so the whole point of the process that we're gonna do is to create like um, an old worn look. Like this piece of furniture is maybe like 100 years old and it has like several layers of paint and it's worn in between. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna be doing. And so this is the cracked gesso. And if you want, Rima, we can, we can go take a deep dive into these products inside the membership too. I hope you're gonna come to our round table chat. Our founding members get a chance to basically tell me what they want inside the group. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Um, we started the group in January. I had an idea of what I wanted to do, but the founding members really get to have a lot of input into what we actually do in the group. So um, now that we've been going for a couple of months, we have a round table schedule so they can tell me what's what. So for the cracked gesso, I'm gonna put equal parts um, cracked gesso and equal parts water. I don't like to mix a lot of this because these products um, don't have like chemicals and stuff in them. So they'll spoil. Hi, Australia. Let me see, Catherine from Australia. Hey, um, so this is cracked gesso. I'm gonna put equal parts water. I'm using, you know, we're not measuring though. And you wanna use warm water. So <laughs> I used my electric kettle right before we came on. And this is my crafting, this is my crafting cup. You guys can tell it already has paint on it. So this has warm water in it. Um, it's not cold water. So I'll use warm water to mix my cracked gesso. And I brought spoons out here and now I can't find them. I see them now. Oh, my poor decoupage paper. See, that's why I sealed it, you guys. Because I don't want to have any problems. 
And I'm going to mix this. I think I put a little bit too much water in there. I may have to put some more cracked gesso. And then we're going to paint it over the top and we're going to dry it. I just want to do one cycle of the process with you guys. Oh, no, I didn't bring my other. I lied to you. We're going to put the cracked gesso and then we'll put the milk paint. And I forgot my other. Oh, no, it's right here. So we're going to walk through this process once. But we're going to repeat this process several times in order to get the finish that we want. So we'll finish next week. Is that okay? <laughs> Girl, that is the mind of a crafter. <laughs> I'll use it for something. Hey, South Carolina. You know what, Tammy, there's no behind. There really isn't. So um, one of the things we're changing, because you guys know what? I am so passionate about teaching. I really am. And I, I just want to teach all the things. But uh, my business coach tells me, she told me I'm too much. I'm doing too much. So I'm stressing people out. <laughs> um, let's see. I have all the stencils for my, oh, that's Dorothy. I'm stressing people out, and so I am slowing down. So don't worry. And everything, you haven't missed anything, right? Because everything is on your dashboard. And you guys know what? Brenda takes all the, like, so if I teach a class or we have a live, um, my um, online business manager, she takes them, and she cuts them down into, like, little, oh, my gosh, excuse me, little bite-sized pieces, so, like, 15 minutes, 20 minutes at most. So if you go on your dashboard, you don't have to commit to watching the whole thing at once. You can just pop on and just watch like 15 or 20 minutes at a time. So you're not behind. Um, and I don't want you to not join in on the Zoom because you feel like you're behind. Because our hanging out together and having community is the most important part of the membership. And so I'm going to slow down on the curriculum because <sighs> I don't want to stress you guys out. That's not the intention. Yeah, Amy, isn't she so animated? She's so funny. I love watching her. I've actually learned a lot from her because I started carrying her products because they really are different than the other products I was carrying. Um, and I really love the different kind of finishes that you can create using her products. And you know what, Rima? I think you would really enjoy them too. So um, we'll do some stuff in the group. We'll create some finishes. And so this is really, really thin. It's not thick at all. And I'm just going to paint this on here. And I don't even have to get 100% coverage. Like if something doesn't get covered, it's fine. Um, because we don't, we don't want anything about what we do for this finish to be perfect. The whole point is that it's worn over time. It's that perfect piece that you find at, you know, the flea market. That's like perfectly distressed from years and years of love from some family. You use her mirror stuff, yes. I know, it is time, you know, um, it's interesting when you're growing as a business because, you know, you go through growing pains. And so um, eventually I'll have somebody that, because I have control issues, girl. Eventually I will find somebody that I trust enough to do my shipping. Um, but it is good for me to understand my operations, right, all the pieces, so that I'm clear about my expectations and I know what to expect at the same time. So we're just, you know, we're in our, we're growing. We're going through some growing pains right now. Um, I don't resent that it requires me to be present because I am so blessed to have this business. And so that's the conversation I was having with myself is like this place where I am today is the exact place where I prayed to be a year ago. Right. So I can't complain about the work because this is what I asked for. And so, um, it's just a transition, but yes, eventually I will have um, somebody 
to help with the shipping so that I don't have to be in the warehouse as much. And honestly, I think um, I was telling the ladies in my membership that I'm so grateful because meeting with them really makes me have to stop and create. So it's like mutually beneficial. Hopefully it's mutually beneficial. I don't know why my comments keep skipping around like back to old comments. It's really weird. It did this last time too. I think after an hour, Facebook is telling me to get off. Is that what it is? And so I just mix these and I have these little containers from when I used to build kits. Um, and so I just mix my stuff in here. So I'll have to, we're, we're going to do multiple um, passes on this. I'm going to dry this really quickly and then we're going to put our next layer of paint and then I'm going to wipe it back so you guys can kind of see. And then we'll do our final white layer next week. And then we'll go in with some um, aging dust after that. And we'll put some wax on this. And I just, I want it to look like it's old world, European, um, beautiful with this gorgeous framed um, countryside. That's like the feeling I'm going for. I know. All my friends think I retired. I just told them. I don't work because I used to, I was the director of a nonprofit for years. And so now I work for this crazy lady with the Afro who seems to think I can do like, I don't know, 15 hours of work in eight hours. <laughs> She's crazy, y'all. She's out of control. Y'all need to talk to her. And it doesn't matter that I don't have 100% coverage because some places will have more, some places will have less. I do want to put a little bit more though because I want it to be a little wider underneath. So I'm going to dry this layer and I'm going to do a really quick second coat. I know I said we're going to jump off, but I think in some of the areas I would like to have that white be a little bit more opaque than it is. My comments are skipping around again. It is so weird when it does that. I do love Amy Howard's products. I will tell you that as a retailer, you really do have to spend a little bit more time educating your customers. There's a little bit of a learning curve with them. I love them though, and it's so worth it. But just be prepared to do a lot more education, right? Um, than maybe we're used to, even though Amy does tons on her YouTube channel. There's one finish that she does that I want to do. Maybe I'll do that one in the membership because it's like four different coats of paint. It's a lot, but it's absolutely gorgeous though. It's fabulous. Okay, so I'm gonna do one quick coat, not the whole thing, just in some places. You guys can see here, I didn't get 100% coverage. That's okay. Um, some places are more opaque than others. That's okay because I'm not looking for 100% coverage. Again, we're trying to replicate a worn um, old world finish and so it's not gonna be like we said we're not looking for like perfect symmetry right there's just some areas where my eye just wants there to be more opaque. Okay. I'm trying to rush too. <laughs> you should do two hour live. Oh my gosh. I don't think nobody wants to hang out with me for two hours. Not the Afro girl. Yes, the Afro. She is out of control. You guys should see the list I make my, for myself every day. I keep telling myself, so I have a mirror in my living room. I write on my mirror. I'm very, very visual. That's how I process information. And um, I really have a legitimate issue with object permanence. And so my list goes on my mirror in my living room right where I can see it. Um, 
And every morning I've been, I try to write, only write three things on that mirror that I have to get done. But y'all know I add stuff to my list every day. So I made up a full plaster finish. I need to try to add some shine areas. Not sure what to use for that look. You know what, Kimberly, have you tried burnishing to see if you, I don't know if you'll get shine because you said faux Venetian plaster. The Venetian plaster is nice because it's actually made of stone. So when you burnish it, you know, you scrape across it, you get those shiny parts. So maybe see if that happens um, when you burnish yours to see if you can recreate that. Um, Billy's asking what time will I begin next Saturday? So I'll be beginning 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time um, all the time. So Arizona doesn't change time. So if you're in Arizona, it'll be an hour earlier. But for everybody else, I think it's the same. So we decided rather than switching times to make it more confusing that we would. Um, so I'm coming on an hour earlier for me, but it's the same time for everybody else because Arizona doesn't participate in daylight savings time. Gosh, Karen, I hope you're feeling better. Yes, so 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I want to say 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Yes. Oh, Chris says try buffing with the paper bag. I forgot about that, Chris. Yes. What time is it? Oh, Lord, it's 6.38. Okay. I want to dry this really quickly, but I know if I, if I leave it on here too long, I'll just end up with ugly bubble paint. And we don't want that. Ugly bubble paint. And we do not want that. I'm going to zoom you guys out just a little bit. I don't want y'all to see my messy table. That's why I have you zoomed in so tight. Do you write in lipstick? Huh? Oh, on my mirror. Okay. Um, no, I just use a dry erase marker. They work really good on glass. They wipe right off. And so even when I was at work, I had like this really big picture in my office and I had lists on there all the time. So you can use dry erase markers on just about any glass as long as it's smooth um, and it wipes right off. I love it. So if you're in a space and like you want it to be pretty, you can get a big old um, frame like with glass, you can put some really pretty paper behind it and they make perfect dry erase boards. Oh my gosh, my comments keep going. <laughs> it's not two hours yet, Tammy. It's, it's just under. I don't think anybody wants to watch a two hour live. Okay, so this is, this is like my distress layer. It's, it's not perfect. You guys see, I just put it on there. That resin is just going to give me trouble all night, isn't it? Um, and so I'm going to put my next layer of chalk paint right over the top of this. And I think I'm going to go ahead and make the gray. Since we're going to come back next week anyways, I'm going to go ahead and make the gray and um, mix up some milk paint really quickly. So your milk paint comes in powder. So even though it doesn't last a long time, it doesn't really matter because you're only gonna mix what you need. Oh, Kathleen says that dry erasers also work on stainless steel. Don't have me writing on my refrigerator, girl. So this is um, a white. So I'm gonna add one scoop of white and I'm gonna put one scoop, maybe, like a half a scoop of black, because I want it to be a gray, but not a dark gray. And whenever I'm mixing colors, I notice that um, the darker colors influence the white colors really quickly. So we don't want it to be a dark gray. So I'm gonna put like just a little bit. If I need to put a little bit more, I can, but just a little bit. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and add my warm water. 
for the paint you don't need warm water but and I, I put too much again and you can see how deep that gray got just from that little bit of black that's a little bit actually that's kind of pretty isn't it let's put some more white in there I don't think I'm going to need any more black in there. That's a pretty gray though, right? It's kind of light. It's kind of fresh looking. And I like the idea of having like um, this cool gray underneath. And then we're going to put the white over the top of that and we're going to have the cool green peeking out. It's going to be really pretty because this is really warm. And so this is going to really pop against all the cool colors that we're using on the back. I think in my mind's eye, that's what I see happening anyways. I'm going to put one more scoop. Your, your milk paint is going to be thin. Um, you don't want it to be thick. But... I didn't really measure my water, so I'm not really good at measuring stuff, y'all. Thank you, Sheila. I hope so. You guys know how you see a picture in your mind and you hope you can like bring it to fruition. And sometimes though, what you end up making is even better than what you envisioned, which that's like creative magic when that happens. And I am out of time. I'm sorry, you guys. We're going to do this last coat really quickly. I just want to get to a stopping point. Um, and then we'll finish next week. Scouts Honor. You guys know what? So after we finished this project, Sonnet gave me this idea. I don't know if Sonnet is still watching, but she did um, a PhD, like a couple of PhD YouTubes, um, where she circled back to her projects half done and she finished them. We have a lot of projects that we've started together that we haven't finished. Well, that I haven't finished. Let's just be honest. So I think I'm going to circle back um, starting, not next week, because we'll finish this one. Well, I guess we will start next week. We'll start back, and I'll circle back, because I still have my heart, my rusty heart. I ran across it today. I was like, oh, wow, I never finished that. And then you guys remember the corbels I started a couple of months ago with the cracked gesso? And we didn't finish those. And then... Um, I have my my art journal that we started a few weeks ago that I need to circle back to. So I think we have a, a few projects that um, I need to circle back to. So we'll do that. And so this is just a light gray color. I thought it would be pretty to have under the white. But what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put this gray color over the top of my cracked gesso. And when I wipe back, some of that green is gonna shine through. Probably a lot of the green is gonna shine through. But we're gonna go over all of this with the white milk paint next week. And then we'll have a little bit of green coming through and we'll have um, this kind of a soft gray coming through. And I think it's gonna look really aged and um, the colors are going to be really pretty with this decoupage paper. Oh, thank you, Rima. I like the gray too. I wanted something kind of natural. And you guys remember what I said earlier, I wasn't concerned about my paper being perfect because we're going to have kind of a distressed finish. And so that green is not going to be as loud as we thought, but it'll still be there. And I'm just going to pretend like I put those drops of paint there on purpose. <laughs> I keep getting old comments. I hope I'm not missing comments. 
Look, I don't have my sound guy here to help me. I'm all alone tonight. I know a lot of people are traveling for the eclipse tomorrow. You guys, safe travels, and I hope you guys enjoy. Be careful watching, because I guess you're not supposed to look like directly at the eclipse. I remember being in school, in grade school, having like, we didn't even look at all. We just had these um, pieces of paper where we could look on the ground and see the shadow of the eclipse. We weren't allowed to look. Oh, well, they told us not to look. I wasn't going to look because I was one of those kids who followed directions most of the time. I want to say, let's see, I was at Fairburn. No, I was at Braddock. Maybe fourth grade, fifth grade, somewhere in there. No, third or fourth grade, somewhere in there. When I was younger, we lived in L.A. And... Um, we used to actually get bused to schools in the valley. So I would be on a bus for like an hour and 45 minutes every morning to go to school. Who goes there? Well, hello, how are you? Are you guys coming to kick me off? Hi. Huh? Watch out for the cord. Oh, you're fine, I'm way over time. I'm surprised anybody is still here. Watch out for the cord. Please watch out for the cord, Damar. Damar? Go by Grandma. Y'all see my husband? He's kicking me off, y'all. No, no, no. I told him we didn't want to come back here and disturb you. Oh, no, you're fine. Harry Nana is here. Actually, Harry Nana. Yes, that's usually where David sits. We need to do your QR codes for the baby shower invitations anyways. Okay. To show Good. You one. Your mom one. sent me um, the links last week. You want to sit with me? You guys get to be so on the entire conversation. Yeah, you what can school sit with did me? you go to when you lived there? So, Flea, I went to Hooper Avenue School, like kindergarten through second grade, oh, no, and no, then no. Oh, yeah. we no, got no. bus to um, <laughs> Fairburn and Braddock, or the two schools I that I was bus to you. before we moved to Arizona. Why did you go to those schools, Flea? That would be funny. Hey, Ken. Oh, Dave says hi, Ken. Say hi, everybody. Oh, My comments yeah. keep skipping, baby. See, I'm handicapped when you're not here. I don't know. What okay, I think that's enough. But see how we covered so much of that? But we're going to dry this, and we're going to wipe back one time, and then we're going to go. All right, I keep asking Damar what his sister's name is, mm -hmm. and he doesn't tell me. So what is Damar's sister's name? I don't think we have a name yet, do we? I think her name's Tiana. Oh, I like Tiana. I've heard Tiana a couple times now. That must be it. Is your sister's name Tiana? I think your son said on Tiana. Yeah. Tiana? Oh, you don't like Tiana? Yeah. No, I like, I like it. That's okay. what the name I chose first, and now he just keeps calling her that. So oh, that must be it then. Tiana. So let's see. Grandpa is Damar's favorite, right? Oh, Flea. See, so. I'm, I left um, my sixth grade year, so I didn't get to go. I was set to go to, I forgot the name of the middle school. You I dropped out of school at sixth grade? No, we moved to Arizona. Oh, okay. No, Flea said she was bus too. It was an interesting social experiment, right? So, anyways. I went to a private school. Well, in Los Angeles, we lived in a predominantly, you know, black and brown part of town. And um, our schools reflected that. Not the best. So they did this experiment where they bust us out to schools in the valley. Especially if you, like, tested high, you were sent out. Well, so I got on the bus and I drove for hours. I go to school. I remember listening to Rod Stewart every morning on the way to school. <laughs> If you want my body and you think I'm sexy, sorry. Flashback, y'all. What were you going to say, babe? I was going to say, I lived in a predominantly white neighborhood, and my mom still wouldn't let me go to public school. Oh, I know. You went to a parochial went school. Went to a parochial school. She worked overtime for 10 years to pay for that. Yeah. Oh, that gray is so pretty, right? It's crazy because the paint is, is so thin, you don't think you're going to get really good coverage. 
but you do. And then I want to dry this and wipe it back so you guys can kind of see. I'm going to wipe a lot back on this layer because we're going to go over this layer with the bright white. And then we'll be more conservative when we're wiping it back. And then I'm probably going to go in with the dust of ages into the recesses of these leaves and make sure that we really highlight the details on the leaves. Um, and then we have to do some gilding, right? I think we have to. You're not doing it tonight, are you? No. <laughs> Next week. Damar, are you going to paint with Grandma? Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> nope, nope. I thought maybe tomorrow. Me. That's his painting right there behind Ariana. Behind Ari Nana. As Damar says. Did you do this, Damar? Yeah. It's yeah. beautiful. Yes. See, Damar's, um, oh, I have to do it right here. Damar's beautiful paint job over my cloche. I think kids are so fearless that we should learn from them. You know, they're not constrained by thinking about what DeMar other people think or worried about how it's going to turn out. Have you used the specimen? Oh, no, these are the old comments. Rima says she has a dust of ages, but she's never used it. You know what, Rima, it's interesting because um, I was going to ask if David went to Catholic school. No, he actually went to... I went to a Lutheran school. A Lutheran school. It was Chicago, and there's a Catholic school on every corner, but we weren't Catholic. Irish Protestant. I think we're the only Irish Protestants in Chicago. So you went to a Lutheran school. It was the only parochial school around. Mm other than Catholic schools. Yeah. I did date Catholic school girls, though. I'm sure you did. I did. <laughs> Still have a love for a plaid hello. skirt. Um, but I was going to tell you, Rima, um, the Death of Ages is interesting because we're used to, like, um, de like, death and, like dark and decrepit or the really dark, dark um, aging dust. And Amy Howard's is really subtle, right? It's not as deep. And so I think that's why it seems a little weird, but it pairs really good with the wax, the dark wax. And so next week we'll play with, um, we're going to wax everything and we're going to use the dust of ages before we sell everything with the clear wax. Holly says that her girls went to a Lutheran um, elementary school also. Up in Minnesota and Wisconsin, I think they're more common, but Chicago is such a Catholic City, Chicago. Um, that it's it's rare. There's that down again. two Lutheran high schools for the entire city, and I don't know, maybe half a dozen Lutheran grammar schools. Mm -hmm. I went to one of them. Um, there just there just aren't a ton because everybody there's Catholic. Okay, you guys, this isn't completely dry, but we're gonna be here all night, so I am going to go in. Um, and I'm going to use my fiber cloth here, even though this is the one I use to clean my lens on my camera every week. And I'm going to be using this antiquing glaze. Actually, I lied to you. I thought you were leaving. No, we got to do one more thing and then I'm going to leave. I am going to do the antiquing glaze. That's why I said I got to wipe it back and then we'll leave. So this is Amy, um, Amy Howard's antiquing glaze and we're going to use this to wipe this back and this sponge, but I want to wet my sponge and I don't need this big of a sponge either. And I'm tearing it instead of cutting it because I want to keep these like really, you know, wicked ends on here. I'm going to wet it first though, because I want it to be soft and I should dip it, but I'm just going to spray it. I'm going to wipe back really quickly, babe, and then we'll be over. So I'm going to dip it into my antiquing glaze and I'm just kind of going to dip like um, I'm going to go, I'm almost depositing it. Oh, you guys can't even see that. I'm depositing it on the surface first and I'm not going to deposit it everywhere, just in the places where I imagine I should be removing paint and definitely over my details because that's the fun part, right? How do you see the comments on your phone? Yeah. Yeah. I'm normally on, uh, Ariana asked, this is how I normally th do this. Ariana asked, <laughs> how do I normally see the comments? I usually have my phone and my tablet going at the same time. So I'm watching YouTube and I'm watching Facebook. I do not watch TikTok. Um, I'm not on TikTok anymore. Oh, you're not on TikTok anymore? No. 
Oh, see, then that's because I wasn't watching. You didn't have enough viewership. <laughs> and then I read the comments for Royce. But I did not bring in my phone because somebody was watching cat videos on them. Oh, you want to use my phone? No. Oh, okay. And... He's like, no, get off. Uh, I was playing uh, oh, uh, Cribbage on my tablet. Cribbage? Well, I have not played that in a long time. Okay, I want you guys to see... Watch out now, don't spill that. Oh, I know, I forgot you, that was You were on tilting. There. Good job, babe. How it doesn't pull <laughs> it off like an irregular, right? It's super irregular. I just, this is what I love about it. So I don't have like a nice, clean, straight line there. I have like this really irregular removal of paint. And when this dries, it's going to be beautiful. I'm going to remove quite a bit on this layer because we're going to do another layer next week where we go with the white paint over the gray and then we'll be wiping back to the green and the and the gray. Does Ariana want to hear it? Who's that, Royce? And so... Yeah, and, and anybody... Some of the, the places, mic. it'll wipe right away when so you just you touch it. So you sit here with your phone and your tablet. Mm -hmm. And, and um, some of the places, you'll have yes. to come back through. But I'm just using... Um, this antiquing glaze, and it's like a tea color. So it does change the color of the paint, but it's super subtle. It's not really... Um, that's your microphone. Now you got to talk. And I think that's why the... Say hi. It works, yeah. right? Oh, that's you. I thought somebody was knocking. No, that's me. Because there are subtle changes, and you build them up I from layer maybe, to layer. I thought maybe Dad was here. That works. I was going to say, he won't be home until Are you like on maternity now? Right? No, I, I get put on light duty on the 10th, but they won't let me be on hot trucks until I go back to my doctor's on the 10th. Oh, that's right. So I'm going to have to go on light duty, but I can't be on hot trucks, and I can't go work at the mine until I go to my OB. Okay. Which I just switched down here, so they don't have no opening until the 10th. Oh, oh. I'm glad you're not on the hall trucks anymore. I worry about you climbing up there. Yeah, they took it to heart. It says no ladders, so they took that to report. Don't play. Heart, and they don't want me using the hall truck ladder, even though it's not like a work ladder. It's a power ladder. They took me off trucks. How how many stories are the hall trucks? For those that don't understand, two they're two story. This yeah, is a they're truck. They're driving around two story buildings. Yeah, it's a truck that's two stories tall. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah, Rima. It's just subtle changes with each layer. Sorry, I'm reading comments. That's okay. And um, and I know, Rima, you'll probably appreciate this more than anyone because you've seen a lot of these beautiful pink finishes. Um, and so that's it. So we're going to stop right here, you guys. And I might play around with this with a little bit more with this layer because I do want to pull off a lot because I know we're going to go over the top and I don't want to lose my grain completely. Um, and we'll come back next week and we will finish with our old, um, old world finish that we're working on today that I think goes perfect with this deck of plush paper. So... David will be very happy when I say. <laughs> what time is it? I don't it's even. It's late. It's like six fifty-eight. See, you weren't here. To call. You two hours. Here. You went two hours. I know. Mm -hmm. So this is where we're stopping, you guys. Super subtle. I may pull off some more. I don't know. I think I'm gonna. Pay. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But we'll come back in next week and we'll finish with our last layer of paint in distress, and then we'll do some waxing and the dust of ages. But. That is all we have tonight. Can you go I by hope grandma? that um, go I, by grandma. my comments start acting bye? weird at the end of my live, you guys. They start you bouncing around. Bye? So if you have any questions, I'll try to go back through and answer them. Good. And then I'll be back on next Sunday. Bye, you want to say bye to everybody? Can you say bye? Bye. We'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye. You guys have a blessed week. And